so in addition to working for the A's, as we we've discussed, you you also work for Comeback Media and host the uh, Short and to the Point podcast. So you already have a busy schedule with the A's. Why were you interested in working for Awful Announcing and and the Comeback and uh, launching a, a new podcast here as well? I I love baseball, but I want to show that I'm versatile and. I, we talked about it before. I'm very curious. I'm extremely curious. And I think in obviously both of our, our producer, uh, Phil, we had a, a soccer analyst come on and that was just an educational interview for myself. And Phil, who's a big soccer guy, loved it. Cause he's like, Jess, you're not supposed to say that. You said that wrong. I'm like, cool. <laughs> like, cool. Like, let me figure this stuff out. And I want people to know, like, there's more to me than baseball. Like I want to put, have WWE people on here, or motocross people, like, and I don't want to just, just stick to sports. And, and like, I think that that's what's interesting for me too, because like when I interview the Tony Kemp's of the world, I can't, it's impossible for me to make it short and sweet. Okay. You played well. Okay, you didn't play well. What are you working on? What are you not working on? I want to talk about like the time you found God. I want to talk about the time that you didn't think God exists. I want to talk about these types of things. You know, I feel like that's so important. And the one thing that we all universally have in common, whether it's sports or not, is like, hopefully we all have something that we love. And I want to know why, because I'm still figuring out life. How are they figuring out life? So that's, that's where I'm coming in. And, and I feel like there's, everybody has a story, you know, we could just, you could have just asked me like, why Oakland A's? And it could have been the end of the conversation, right? Easily. I'd been like, I don't feel like, no, I like baseball. We're done here, Brandon. Thanks. And I feel like that's not how people are. And on this, on the same wavelength, I love being able to break people out of their shell. I'm very thoughtful with my interviews. You know, I don't, I don't want to just like, and I want to be charismatic with them because I know they have a story to tell. There's going to be somebody that's interested in it, whether it's my family or not. Cause I have people in my family who love to listen to my interviews, but I don't want them to only care about baseball either. So for me, it was, it was breaking out. I missed writing a lot too. And so I'm so thankful that they have the comeback and awful announcing. It's the one thing that I missed so much and I'm really good at it. So I think that that's great as well. And there's certain aspects that like you can write about better than you can talk about or, be on the radio or podcast about. So I think that was important as well. And not to mention the fact I'm better when I, when I can do a sit down interview, whether it's soccer related or golf related, mind you, everybody in that clubhouse plays golf. So I have to do golf or, or what am I going to talk to these guys about? Steph Curry would sit on the bench waiting for him to go play in the game. And he'd think about the round he played the day before. Like people are obsessed with whatever, whatever they're obsessed with. So I feel like that's, that's interesting too. And I don't like the cliche is like, what makes you tick? Okay. Well, yes, I want to know that, but in a more conversive way, because at the end of the day, I, that it's developing a relationship. And I, I can't tell you the amount of times where I would leave a conversation and they're like, that was a really fun interview. That was fun. And, and that's, that's my ultimate goal. And I want people to listen and, and be curious just as much, you know? Did you happen to hear or did anybody tell you about uh, Dave Portnoy's response to, to Jared Carabas being on your podcast? <gasps> oh, wait. Yes, I do. I remember somewhat. That was kind of a, a crazy week for me. But I know people, I remember somebody DM or tweeted me. They're like, you need, because I said, Jared offered the information saying yeah. like, I was held back from Barstool. And right, I which commented he did. on it. Yeah, he offered that. And, yeah. and so I, so I comment, they're like, Jessica, you should have done this. I'm like, you, you literally gave four seconds of a clip. He offered the information. I commented, but I don't, I don't remember what Dave Portnoy said. Oh yeah, God. it was, it was, it was fine. He, he spoke about it on a, on a different barstool podcast, but um, he, he had just essentially said that uh, like he, he took, took issue with Jared kind of saying that he left to prove that he could succeed without barstool and without, Portnoy without the barstool brand um and Portnoy's issue was he said that Jared left because he he got more money so like that was that was his he was almost like why why was he saying that if if he left just because of uh oh, okay. for more money but but he the, didn't say anything bad about me nothing bad about you uh and short and to the point got a mention your let's name got go. a mention as well so like let's oh, go good, great stuff there yeah 